watching The Last Word. I'm Vishnu Shom. This time of the year is when it gets awful across the Indo-Gangetic plain, particularly parts of North India because of this. Stubble burning in fields across Punjab and Haryana, parts of Uttar Pradesh as well. It represents a crisis which ultimately costs people their lives. It is now a statistical fact that um, air pollution is linked directly to lowering the lifespan of people across the country. A few years back, when we used to talk about air pollution, because it's been a problem now for several years, uh, we, used to, we didn't have any empirical data on how air pollution itself caused deaths. People would die of heart attacks, people would die of strokes, but the link, the direct link to air pollution as being the primary cause wasn't there. But now there are studies around the world which have absolutely clearly shown that what we are talking about is a link between this and the death of people, which is why year after year, day after day, during specific times of the year, I come back and I do these programs. And um, this year it's interesting because in as much as we are seeing some important changes in the situation in Punjab and Haryana, there is also the situation of farm fires in Punjab, which are a huge crisis potentially for India as well. But are our chief ministers in Punjab and in Haryani, Haryana doing enough as far as potentially taking action against those who violate the rules of the Supreme Court by going ahead and lighting up these fires in their fields? Let's listen in to a couple of reactions from the chief ministers of both states. And then I'll be back with a lot of data which I'm going to present to you on what the actual situation as of today actually is. नहीं नहीं माननीय हमारे चीफ सेक्रेटरी साहब अगर माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बुलाया है तो वो जाएंगे और वो जवाब भी देंगे हमारे हरियाणा के किसान बहुत ही जागरूक हैं मैं तो बहुत हमारे किसानों को प्रणाम करता हूं मैं इसलिए करता हूं कि जो भी बात हम बोलते हैं उसको वो सहस अक्सर लागू करते हैं कोई भी हमारा किसान पराली नहीं जलाएगा हम माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट को इस बात से हमारे चीफ सेक्रेटरी साहब अवगत कराएंगे और एफर्ट्स में हम कोई कमी नहीं करेंगे सुप्रीम को मान्य सुप्रीम कोर्ट के भी जो आते रहते हैं हमें गाइडलाइंस हम फॉलो करते हैं पहले तो जब हम आग हमारे यहाँ पराली को लगती है उस किसान के खुद के और उस पूरे गांव के फेफड़ों में से निकलती है ना वो कोई कार्बन मोनोडाइऑक्साइड से तो सांस नहीं लेते लेते तो ऑक्सीजन से ही है ना लेकिन उसके लिए बैठना पड़ेगा ऐसे मीटिंगें करके आ जाते हैं अब मेरी मेरी मीटिंगें हुई हैं बहुत सेंटर के साथ जी प्रेरित करो ने कहा जी कंपनसेशन दे दो कुछ इंडिया गवर्नमेंट दे दे कुछ पंजाब गवर्नमेंट दे देगी उनको बोलेंगे कि ये आप आपका कंपनसेशन है आग नहीं लगानी है ऑल राइट बट व्हाट वी आर गोइंग नाउ डू इज टेक अ लुक एट सम ऑफ द इंटरेस्टिंग डेटा फ्रॉम हरियाणा एंड पंजाब नाउ व्हाट वी आर लुकिंग एट ओवर हियर इज क्यूमुलेटिव डेटा ऑफ द टोटल नंबर ऑफ फार्म फायर्स एंड वी हैव गॉट 3 इयर्स दैट वी आर लुकिंग एट uh 2021 22 2023 and of course this year 2024 which is the red one now what's actually changed uh, in the state of haryana and let's just take a look at this is the red number 428 now it's not the best because um we'd gone down in 2022 to 352 cases of farm fires between the 1st and the 17th of october right we went up in 2023 to 565 fires as you can see over here however it's now at 428 so in other words there's been an improvement uh, from the 1383 certainly which we saw in 2021 and there's been an improvement from the 565 which we saw in 2023 but we aren't at this stage at that uh, uh, at the 2022 mark of 352 it's in fact much worse than that so while the numbers have come down they've not come down it's not a record low it's, it 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 needs to come down much more sharply so that's what the situation in haryana actually is let's take a look uh, at um, this data now for the state of punjab again cumulative data where is this coming from it's coming from uh, professor hirin jetwa at the nasa goddard space flight center and the morgan state university and i can also tell you that this is data that the punjab state government and the haryana state government and the center is relying on a lot of this comes from nasa it's corroborated by data from isro as well so if we come to the wide shot uh, i can just explain what exactly it is that we are talking about um so again the red 
uh, bar, the, the red line over here is 2024, right? Um, and as you can see, there is a huge improvement in terms of Punjab itself. Uh, from a high of 2,181 fires in 2021, it came down to 1,605 fires in 2022. It went down to 1,100 fires in 2023. And this year, it's just 638. But what I can share with you at this stage, and this is the part um, you know, which leads one to a, a little bit of a disappointment. In the beginning of October, Punjab was registering on, on certain days 15 fires, 20 fires, 25 fires. And one really felt that there were clear signs that it was going to almost completely go away. But by approximately the 9th of this month, there was a climb which we started seeing from this stage, and then it started going up. It's still uh, less, considerably less, than what it was last year. So a very, very welcome sign as far as Punjab was concerned. But yes, the real concern is this. It's not been too bad as far as farm fires are concerned, but will it remain that way in the state of Punjab? The state government will need to do more. But this is something now that uh, we can actually share with you. The look uh, at uh, a, what the situation in Haryana in 2023 and 2024 was. What I've done is between the first and the 17th of October of each year, I've taken a couple of random dates just to visualize this. This comes from NASA Worldview, just to give our viewers a sense of the areas where farm fires take place, first in the state of Haryana, and you'll also get a sense of whether there's any change. This was the situation in 2023. This is Haryana that you see uh, over here, right? Again, Haryana in 2024, broadly the same, 2024 slightly better on the 2nd of October. On the 8th of October, again, broadly the same, perhaps in 2023, there were a greater number of forest fires, uh, farm fires which were taking place. On the 17th of October, 2023, I suspect it rained. You can see all the clouds as well on that day. When it rains, these farm uh, fires go down. But this has been the situation yesterday on the 17th of October. And that is a matter of concern because in Haryana, you can see large areas now uh, sort of sc having scattered farm fires. And the numbers appear to be going up. It needs to start coming down once again. But uh, let's also take a look now at the situation in Punjab, just in order to give you a sense of, of um, you know, what it was last year and this year. Again, random samples. On the 8th of October, 2023, we've seen you know, fires over here in a large area, a swath of land uh, in the greater Amritsar area. 2024, that's less than half. Visually, that is less than half. What we see in terms of this satellite data right, is exactly what corroborates the data that we've been talking about earlier on on this program. Let's move to uh, the 12th um, over here. And this is what I was discussing earlier on. You can see a larger number of fires. So between the 8th and the 12th, and in the data which I've been studying, it's actually on the 9th onwards that we've seen a rise in the farm fires in Punjab. Uh, it does, in fact, certainly in the Amritsar area, indicate that there are many more farm fires than there are uh, this year than they were last year. Let's move to uh, the next uh, on the 17th, again, as I mentioned, on the 17th, it was raining. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it not, it's not visible whether there were farm fires, if any. But um, over here in this Amritsar belt and other parts, you see fires. What are all of these red fires? That's what I'm going to talk about next. Because here's what we really need to consider. The farm fire situation in Pakistan is terrible. Let's play this out. Um, I've got animation over here from the first. Now, just look at this entire area. This is Pakistani Punjab. And you're going to see the number of red dots go up. 7th of October, 8th of October, 9th, 10th. Look at the increase. 11th, all over the place. 12th, even more. 13th, 14th, 15th of October. Just keep looking at the red dots. More and more red dots. And finally, this is the 17th. Stay on this for a moment. All of Pakistan bordering Punjab. You can see multiple fires. These are many times what we are actually seeing in uh, Haryana and in Punjab. And the big question is this. It is a fact that um, if the winds are in a particular direction, then these fires can actually move into India as well. So let's move to that final image, which I wanted to, to show you on what the situation in Pakistan yesterday was. And this is the real shocker. I'm going to spend some time on this. Ap 
clumps of forest fire, uh, farm fires uh, in uh, Pakistan along the border or with Punjab over here. Uh, and if you just compare that with what we see in uh, Amritsar and other parts uh, of Punjab, what we have in our, in our Punjab is a fraction of what we see across Pakistan. And this has really been building up across Pakistan for the last several days. You know, I mean, well west and northwest of Lahore as well. So it is a real crisis because this can easily blow in the direction of India. And we certainly don't want a situation where our politicians say that, look, you know, it's all taking place uh, from Pakistan. In fact, we need to be concerned about our own states as well. Um, and I've sort of brought you the data, as it were, joining us to discuss this advocate Anmol Pawar of the Ahmadmi Party, Shazia Elmi of the BJP, uh, Zerin Osho, the Director of India Program at the Institute for Governance and Sustainable uh, Development. I'm also joined by Anumita Roy Chaudhary, Executive Director for um, the Center for Science and Environment. Thank you all very much for being with us. So, uh, Anmol, uh, thanks very much for being with us. It's been excellent in Punjab compared to the last few years, but I must tell you, from the 9th of this month, it started going up again. So, even though it's less than last year, that's the worry, right? That these farm fires might continue to go up. Now, the Chief Minister seemed to suggest today that it's the centre that needs to do all of this work. We keep talking about this every year. But will your government follow what the Supreme Court has said? That if required, action needs to be taken against farmers. Vishnuji, uh, we will certainly comply with all the directions of the Honorable Supreme Court. And uh, the only state governments in India who are genuinely working to combat pollution are the Ahmadmi Party-led state governments in Delhi and Punjab. And it is the data from Indian Agriculture Research Institute, which is a central government agency, which has revealed that the Punjab government has been su successful in effectively reducing the stubble burning incidents in last three years by more than 50%. When we came in power, there were more than 72,000 incidents, which has now come down to almost 30,000 incidents. And on the other side, it's the BJP-led states of Uttar Pradesh and Haryana where these incidents have risen significantly. And in fact, your own channel uh, la last week, it showed a report which says that uh, the data from the NASA Worldwide Satellite, which detects fire incidents around the world, it corroborated the assertion made by the Punjab government that they have been successful in reducing the fire, fire farm incidents. No, that's fine. In fact, we've got that data over here. And it has to be said that um, the Punjab Pollution Control Board, uh, I've referred to their data as well in a previous program. It broadly is along the lines of what international scientists are actually saying. And so just again, for the benefit of our viewers, 638 farm fires uh, so far this year, right, till the 17th of October. And every year it's been coming down from 2,181 in 2021. This is 2022, 2023, 2024. So that's good news. Uh, it is. And uh, I think we all need to really accept that. But let's talk, Shazia, a little bit with you and the Haryana situation. Uh, let's go back to the previous image of Haryana, uh, if we can. There we go. And so, Shazia, the question is this. While it's lower than what it's been, you know, there's, uh, it's, it's certainly lower than 2023, but it's not lower as of the 17th of October than 2022. So there's been a bit of a reverse, uh, and that's a matter of concern. Again, my question is so, the same. Shazia. If I may be allowed to come in, yes. Yeah, my, yes, you know, I followed this. Uh, I heard I followed what the chief minister had to say, you know, but will he take action if required against farmers? Yeah, I heard you. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been following every bit of it. It is indeed my subject. I've done a lot of work on it. There is a very important variable that mm -hmm. you forgot to mention there. And I think if you were to do more research, you'll know something very interesting, which is also well documented, that while the area harvested, in Punjab is very little because they will be doing that later. I, it, and this is nothing to do with the, uh, Punjab doing better or worse. Uh, the stubble burning, which is associated with rice and wheat cropping pattern, if you were to see why Punjab uh, is, seems to be doing well now, is because only 11% of the paddy area in, has been harvested so far in Punjab. That's true. As opposed to Haryana which is doing much more. So this is a very important variable. Also the exit of the monsoon. There's been a late exit no, of the monsoon as well. Yeah. Not just that. Not just that. Yeah, I just want to finish my point. 
not just that if you just see there is a law actually which has been made in haryana and there are actual uh, incentives which are given to farmers for to prevent this from happening and also strictures and also punishment that uh, the the crops are, will be identified and flagged and uh, not be sold uh, easily in the market so they'll be they'll be called out so to speak so that there is uh, some incentive some uh, re, uh, some reward and punishment there and if you just see the supreme court mentioned this last year in november uh, last year that uh, it is indeed something and told the punjab government that you must learn from haryana government as to how they checked um, farm fires because starting from 2021 uh, when there were almost 6000 farm fire incidents that decreased to 3233 and then came down to 1740 in 2023 i am not saying it's any good but the new law which is about the fine which is about flagging the, those farmers who are not um, um, being compliant is indeed a big measure. Okay. You know, we Fair used enough. to hear before the Madhi Party came to power that it, indeed if, um, um, if in Punjab they came to power and Captain Amrindal were to be removed, who was a Congress CM, things would change. Then we heard that in MCD they were voted to power. No, but Shazia, I think you'll that accept that. Let's not look at it from, uh, you know, an Aam Aadmi Party AQI, versus BJP you standpoint. The AQI of New Delhi. And if, no, no, you have to look at the smoke tower. You know the smoke tower which was uh, inaugurated with so much fanfare. It is just not no, being No, no, Shazia, hold on, hold on. I don't want to but talk about the two two memo. Let's talk about the larger problem before we talk about smoke towers. No, 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 no. Shazia, hold on. Let's talk about, we've got a lot of data so to try and... And I think you make about. an important point. Hold on, Shazia, one sec. You make an important point when Anumita come in on this. The data for Punjab is very, very, I mean, it's comparatively good. But I think the point that Shazia makes that, look, there's only a small percentage of uh, the, the crop which has uh, been harvested so far. Therefore, there is a possibility of more stubble burning going forward. And number two, the point that I was mentioning, that there's been a late exit of the monsoon, which is why there's been no buildup of fires per se, certainly in these states. So therefore, are we really early in a lot of this, that the worst may still be yet to come? I mean, is, is that something you look at, Anumita? See, this is something that now we really have to understand by looking at the data and what you have just shown, that over a period of time, there is a decline in numbers, but clearly we are not where we need to be. Right. But the number that I would like to highlight, when we looked at the total number of fire count of the four states together, so 2023, it was somewhere in that little more than 89,000. And already in October, by 15th October, we are talking about little more than 59,000. I'm combining all the four states here. Now, if by October we have so many numbers, now going forward, obviously we are predicting and we are just assuming at this moment, but if the numbers are already high, then there's a likelihood that if we do not step in right away with everything that we need to do, and what is more important today, Vishnu, that solutions are clear to us. And yet we are in this situation, though there is a decline, something is working on ground clearly, but not enough. And uh, there is a lot more to do. But the, it is more important to focus on why the infield solution and the ex situ, that what you can do with the uh, a stubble that can be taken out of the field and the Farmers can earn something out of it. So both the set of solutions, why is it that we have not been able to scale up adequately with the right intervention to build supportive infrastructure to enable implementation at a scale and with speed? I think that is the question we are asking repeatedly all the time. So if we know that the farmers are, but they have to do some, uh, need access to the machines on time, uh, whether that's rental or self-owned, then why are we not prepared adequately in advance to ensure all farmers have access? Okay. And second, there's an opportunity in NCR today because all the industry and the others, uh, and the also uh, the power plants have been asked and are already using biomass as fuel, which has created a commodity out of the stubble uh, that is being generated. There's a value that we have added to it. But 
even though there is a market for it and is growing, but we need to step in, the government needs to step in to support development of the infrastructure for collection, bailing, storage, transportation, so that access to the raw material and marketing it on time by the farmers can be enabled. So we have to focus on the enablers now. No, absolutely. I mean, enough of blame. Yeah, I, I, and I asked both my political guests, let's not make this a blame game because the air doesn't stop in the Haryana-Punjab border or vice versa. It's all over. It's a mess. We need to fix it for all of our sakes. But I want to go back and, and uh, Zerid, just come to you about the situation in Pakistan. So if we can have that final image up, and that's an image from the 17th of October. This is the one that I'm talking about over here. We want to get better in India, and we have to. But this is not stopped by some boundary or border or a border fence. If the wind shifts, it comes right in over here. So Zerin, if this is the trend in Pakistan, are we in serious threat of this having an impact on India? Uh, hi, Vishnu. Good evening, and thank you so much for having me on the show tonight. Yes, this is a problem because, like Anumita said, uh, the, it's, it's an air shed approach that needs to be taken into account. We are doing that. We have an example of that happening currently in the indo gangetic Plain region, where we have the states of Punjab, Haryana, and Uttar Pradesh already in the first phase of the program. And the program has been financed by World Bank, and World Bank uh, does aspire to take the program and expand it to Nepal and uh, other countries in the region, so on and so forth. So if that is an example that we've seen so far that is going to create a huge impact in the air quality for the indo gangetic Plain region, the same could be said for creating a Joint managed, jointly managed airshed approach to uh, the Pakistani side of the border. Now, coming to the legal aspects as well, the public international law also gives us lots of uh, frameworks and principles of common law that could be used. So, for example, transboundary harm, which is a well well-established principle of law could be applied in certain circumstances. If this is a problem that persists into our borders, uh, despite us having done as much as we could have possibly done. And so the approach then becomes a twofold approach. One is to look at what we can do domestically within our borders. And the other looks at what happens uh, through externalities, as you're pointing out, using the data here. No, absolutely. And I just want to, you know, as we come close to the end of this program, um, Shazia, what the, the Punjab government says, and every government in Punjab has said it, it's not just Aam Aadmi Party, is that, look, there is only so much that we can fund in terms of encouraging farmers to find some way of dealing with their stubble. There has to be some financial incentive. They don't have the means of doing it themselves. Now, Anumita raised the larger concern without getting into a tutu meh meh. What is the way forward? Because it has to be done, right? No, you, uh, I don't. I don't quite get the drift. You know, you don't want it to be a tutu meh meh. Yet you ask a political question. It's not a political question. Time, I'm asking an economic question so, on, so on I, how I does one incentivize? No, let me tell you. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. I know what you. You have less time. You know, so I, I get it. I'm not so um, slow yeah. on the uptake. I do get things fast. So unless and until you have responsibility fixed, and there is responsibility. We, there is complete and clear jurisdiction and responsibility affixed. There is a Punjab Pollution Board, which is there only for this purpose, which is supposed to look at it and monitor. Do you know 48% of the vacancies are still there because the CM doesn't even have the time? So, And there is a, there's a pollution cess also in Delhi, which was unused, which has just been wasted. There have been purchases of smoke towers, which were not used. There are, there are strict measures that, you, that have to be taken when it comes to uh, dust control and vehicular pollution. They have not been enacted upon. So yes, you will have to get into the nitty gritty and not into just uh, sweet platitudes and get your hands dirty with a fixing responsibility as to who has the power, who has the money, who, has the, who, has, who, who is the minister in charge and the department in charge. And only then can you move forward. You can't make it like a... You know, we are the world, we are the children kind of an approach. That, that's not how it can happen. Anmol, how would you respond to that? Vishnuji, the Punjab Pollution Control Board, as per the directions of National Green Tribunal, has already submitted a detailed action plan as to how they'll combat the rising fire incidents six months back. 
and uh, recently we have heard uh, the division bench of the honorable supreme court wrapping the haryana government stating that they have not taken a single action against so the ones who are involved in stubble one but this slimily like, you forgot <laughs> Shah, please please allow me to complete very slimily you the, forgot the the honorable supreme haryana court wrapped the haryana government for the inaction to take a single no, action against the ones in front of me, who are it is haryana who are, who are involved in stubble Bull? burning and, and we must not forget we must and you must also say how why does this debate have to be a fight i'll come back to you you make your point i'll try and come back to you but there's no slimy business here we're trying to breed i think we're all agreed upon that no i think it's very slimy when you you misquote the supreme no, court no no so i'll come to you i'll come supreme to you just one sec i'll come to you one second slimy. let him make his point and i will come to you last shazia no what you say so no it's a supreme court report is being misquoted there is something slimy you know politically I, about it I don't I you think so Admol, Shazi, finish your finish your point yes environment does not recognize state borders and this inaction on the part of adjoining state governments i mean uh, it uh, the consequences of their inaction ripple across the whole region and a collective effort a collective approach is required to combat the air pollution rising air pollution all right well let's hope that that is something that can happen otherwise year after year one discusses this on this program more than any other channel and there's it's the same point it's the center which blames punjab punjab blames the center there is no incentive for farmers the arguments raised 5 years ago are still back right now the supreme court is hearing it anumita has been discussing this with me for the last 5 or 6 years non stop and we are back to square one the only little thing that's working for all of us is that in haryana farm fires down and punjab they're certainly down but will it last because there's that entire concern of farm fires in pakistan as well out of time from all of us here good night